Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode I begin with actually unlocking the sick bay as everybody in the comments told me to. Um, well the reason why I missed that was because of this purchase 8 parts thing down here. I went, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Of course it's not, I guess, not considered a part, but I thought there were only 8 things to unlock and I uh, completely missed this entry cost thing here. Also I thought that some of the other modules uh, the unique modules in Kerbalism are automatically added, like, um, well, anyway, I'm not going to search for them, but you know what I mean. There are some of the little things that seem to just get added, like these. I, I just, I guess I got it confused with, uh, you know, the stuff that is automatically added to the pods. And I think uh, down the line, there are more of those. But anyway, uh, the important thing is to get this done. Oh, heck, you know what? Why don't we just unlock all of these? Uh, and and that <laughs> yeah so that 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 doesn't include that all right upgrade cost is two hundred and seventy five thousand mm. okay well we're only gonna have like one of those in our entire game then <laughs> so uh, that's that's pretty darn expensive I gotta say so I added restock it hasn't changed much let's take a look at our stations quickly mainly we're uh, resolving stuff these jewel missions and bringing that one mission around Ike back, but we probably are going to need to deal with the which got you know uh, maintenance issues and stuff like that as well. So there may be maintenance EVAs to do, and um, eventually we'll have to bring people back. But yeah, so Euphrates Station. Okay, well. It doesn't look very different. Uh, well, except there's a clippy issue here. There's a Z-fighting thing going on. And that's probably because the size of that changed, huh? Yeah. What, what was that? Okay, there's a decoupler here. Oh, uh, it, it, I think I didn't have the shroud on, but then it restored the shroud, maybe? I feel like that's what happened there. So, yeah, that's... Well, let's get into daylight. It doesn't look very different. I'm not sure what all the brouhaha is all about. I mean, there's hardly like the difference between stock and then stock revamp, for instance. That's completely different. This is all very subtle, and in some cases, uh, you know, like these could do with a rework. Honestly, uh, I can see the the lines on these tanks are much better. Uh, this is much more textured. Uh, it's got a bump map. These don't have the yellow on them anymore. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. And um, how's power? Well, power's there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just some of the lines. The, the hitchhiker storage containers definitely look a lot better. Not enough to justify 275,000, but you know. So I'm assuming that we're going to be. We gotta need to build a new one with that sick bay in it and launch that up. We can't just add it like this. But first of all, I have to get control back. All these Kerbals on board and they can't control this thing. There we go. So yeah, uh, so we'll have to launch that separately. Uh, the baguettes are looking spiffier. They've got more of a gold foil thing going on. The RC exports are clipping into the baguettes now. I guess something changed size there. Okay, so that is restock for us, I guess. Not a big deal, I don't think. Um, I just, uh, you know, minor quality of life improvements. Okay, so there's this RDU, Radiation Detoxication Unit. The, the cost of this is 4,000. Wait, this is weird. Not, but it says 4,000 here, but it's only 3,715? I don't know. And then it doesn't seem to indicate anything about that. It's definitely not one of these. So 
So does it not cost the 275000 It seems like it ought to. I mean, it's a pretty special sort of part. Yeah, I guess the RDU is already on here. So what was that 275000 about? Okay, um, let's see. We'll test it out. Fobri, well, uh, Fobri's a scientist and hard at work. I don't know, actually. Are they still working on something in the mobile processing lab? Doesn't seem so. Okay, maybe Fobri can uh, transfer over here. I, I guess the optimal thing is just to put them all in there uh, so that they all detoxify at once while we're running it. Oh, and, and now it has a separate Cure Fobri and Cure Domen. Oh, and this uh, Ripford's already in this one. Let's say Cure Ripford. Well, Ripford's at 19% radiation right now, and I don't know how long it's going to take. We might as well go ahead and cure the other two. Oh, uh, we can only cure one at a time in each one. So, transfer. Good thing we have three, then. wonder why it needed to pressurize again, but okay. Cure Doman. All right, they're all being cured. But I don't know how long it's going to take. But that's all right. We're planning to wait 300 days anyway. So we are going to find out. I'll check in on them whenever there's some sort of uh, maintenance issue on here. Okay, we just got a message that we mapped 1 out of 16 of the asteroids for the Sentinel satellite. So it's going to be a while, but they gave us 831 years. Um, whether adding real slow systems is going to totally ruin it, that's probably likely, actually. Um, I don't know where it's going to end up. We'll see. Uh, that'll be an interesting thing to find out. But we've already time warped uh, 60 days without, uh, I think without incident, but I might have po popped up with something else. Oh, uh, life support failed on Euphrates Station. It is gone for good. I suppose we should check up on them then. There is backup life support, of course, but we should see whether we need to evacuate the station or something. Oh, well, we at least need to evacuate that hitchhiker container because Fobri is not going to be happy. Let's see. Info. Fobri's down to 7%. Doman's down to 4%. And Ripford down to 5%. So basically, um, maybe 80 days would do, 80 to 100 days would do the trick. Something around there. We'd say 100 days to cure as much as they had. All right. Uh, dismiss Fobri. And transfer out of that pod, please. But go back to the lab. Okay, well, critical failure of life support there. Maybe we should just, uh, in the end, uh, decouple this side, which is sort of messed up, and just uh, deorbit it. It's about time. I guess that's a possible thing. Ahead of that, we'll transfer over the life support, but we'll wait until. Um, Dolman Kerman has finished up with uh, the detoxification, the deradiation. I don't know what to call it really. That's a lot of oxygen consumption suddenly. It's doing that fake fuel cell thing. I think it's doing that fake fuel cell thing. And I think that probably has let, well, yeah, because of the fake fuel cell thing, it's saying that we only have one hour of oxygen here. And probably if we're not focused on it, it'll be all right, too. Oh, while we're time warping, it doesn't do it. But we'll deal with that. They're coming back home within a year anyway. I feel like we should send some of our other Kerbals out to the station to detoxify. Or maybe let's see if uh, our Kerbin station, which isn't actually listed as a station here, can handle it. Maybe it can accommodate them so we don't have to send them all the way out to Minmus for it. Well, we've got two hitchhiker storage containers here. It's got that nitrogen problem, though. And it's got no nitrogen on board. Let me see if I can send up a little probe with just nitrogen. It looks like we need 50,000 here. But that's... Actually, we need more than 50,000. It takes more than the capacity to actually... Uh, get the um, habitat working. We'll send a lot of nitrogen. 
Okay, I'm suddenly getting all sorts of weird stuff happening between tanks now that I've added restock. Um, for instance, this should have symmetry, and it's not attaching at all, even when I don't have any symmetry. Uh, like here, it's supposed to have six-way symmetry. Where is the symmetry? These tanks worked fine before. And I don't think they've been changed by restock. They look the same. Why is symmetry? Is it just these tanks? Or is it like in general? No. That symmetry works now. Well, it's it's not symmetrizing across those four. That's... Hmm. Maybe I've got the wrong version of something. So, I'm going to double check all the versions and try and get the latest versions. And we'll see whether that fixes things. Okay, nope, I uh, updated everything and symmetry just doesn't work on these tanks. Curious, well I got rid of restock and I still can't get symmetry on this. And let me just verify another tank. And it's just the Kerbalism parts. I am using a regular version of Kerbalism 2.1.2 and I could have sworn I've uh, attached thing these particular tanks in symmetry before. I made sure that I have made no changes to the version currently in this install. This is KSB 1.6.1, .1, I should clarify. Well, that's going to complicate matters. <laughs> um, I guess I'll have to put them one at a time. But let's just get on. Uh, let me put back in restock and then let's get on with it. Okay, well I have no idea what's going on with the attachment of those particular parts, uh, those currently nitrogen tanks. All the other parts seem to attach just fine as far as uh, symmetry is concerned. Now this rocket, I've called the whole system nitro for now, uh, for the nitrogen, and I'm gonna try stage recovery with this. Technically I could land it on my own, technically it has enough delta V to get to orbit all on its own and uh, potentially come back. But uh, it's got parachute, it's got all the things. I've uh, worked on its uh, center of lift and center of mass so that it's proper going up and coming back down. It's got the Bobcat engines, landing legs obviously, it's sitting on them. It's got RCS, it's got batteries, probe core, uh, the works. Uh, no heat shielding, but we'll expect it to come tail down. The thing is, in previous occasions with stage recovery, if you're going really fast, it seems to not want to recover things, so I don't know if it's going to recover this or not. Uh, we'll cut it short, um, quite a bit short in fact. You can see we've got lots of Delta V to make the rendezvous with the station, and obviously we're not particularly inclined with it right now. A distance to target is pretty close, we should get going. And um, yep, launch, gear up. Now, when I decide to put in real solar system, that's gonna make the whole recoverability, re recoverability thing a whole lot more important. Um, because I won't have the contract situation figured out. And so without stage recovery, things are gonna get really expensive. But with stage recovery, maybe we can still manage stuff. As you can see, I've got 200,000 nitrogen, so hopefully that'll be enough, I don't know. Uh, separate the fairings. Ooh, ooh. Okay, and um, yeah, we'll see whether stage recovery deals with this stage or not. Let's separate all that off. And here, not the most, ooh, it's bouncing back at it. Uh, not the most efficient engines, I'm using the spiders for the first time. I mean, and you know. They sort of look good in this context, and we didn't need, like, um, the Twitch engines. Let me clear up our previous messages as we wait for a potential message that says that the stage we just left off has been recovered, or maybe has not been recovered. I hope it didn't already make that determination, and I just got rid of that. Hmm. Okay, sliding right along here. Now I can't hear the thrusters, which is a little bit disorienting, but anyway, that was a quick docking. I'm not used to that at all. 
but all right um now let's activate the habitat and see if that's safe or not well, i guess i'll know when it's done when the nitrogen stops getting depleted huh okay i think it's done and we're at the normal nitrogen depletion rate now uh yep doesn't say anything about repressurizing so hopefully it's safe to bring two crew up to this well we can bring four maybe let's see how many we need to cure of radiation certainly valentina's at the top of that list okay i decided to go with experience and Romore and Bill have our record for number of stars. They have three apiece, and I wanted to send Valentina up. Romore only has 10% radiation, though. The other two have 40 and 45, so they needed more. But still, now that Romore is here, we should just deal with it. And let's thrall up. SAS is on, and wait a little bit as the target catches up to us. This is a sort of stripped down version of the Minmus Bopper. It's a little bit, lot lighter and we've got SRBs on the side here and just one of the Bobcat engines at the center. And launch. I tuned down the thrust on the SRBs. Okay, separation. All right. A little bit tight on the booster separation, but it's fine. Okay, next. So far looking good for a quick rendezvous. Well, yeah, I don't think I could have done this any better. Okay, let's hope nothing catastrophic happens when we dock to it like suddenly all the nitrogen goes away nitrogen reserves restored what do you mean nitrogen reserves restored nitrogen was fine in the first place and well let me just top off the internal tanks it's true i wonder why this one has 4000 capacity and this one only has 2000 capacity Mm, probably uh, maybe because this has the pressure control just a precaution okay so now presumably we can I mean it seems like life support is working on here so transfer crew Valentina well there doesn't seem to be a the same module on here. It seemed to automatically be added to the Minma station, but the uh, radiation module has not been automatically added to this station. Okay, going away and coming back, put the RDU on it, and it also has that automatic mob propellant fuel cell because. You can see we're losing oxygen and replenishing nitrogen because we're on the dark side. I really don't like that. Um, I never turned one on. Anyway, RDU is curing Valentina. RDU is curing Bill. And if there was... Uh, these, these two have quite a lot of radiation. But if the other crew is any indication, we can expect them these guys to be cured in a hundred days or so. Oh, our mob propellant is going away. Why, why is it? We're in daylight now. It shouldn't be using this mob propellant in order to replenish the the electric charge. I really don't want it to do that and I never put that module on here. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, at least the RDU is working here, and I don't have to like transfer them to Minmus to uh, rid them of their radiation. We have a facility here ready to go. Okay, uh, I'm gonna just wait the 200 days and do the jewel things now. 
Uh, let me just double check on the life support here. I mean, it says, well, maybe I can't wait the 200 days. We'll just wait the 100 days because the oxygen's a bit tight there. Mainly because, you know, on the nighttime side, it consumes so much. Otherwise, it would have at least a year. Hmm. Anyway, that's the plan. Oh my god. I was time warping with Kerbin Station 1 and they got burned alive. It said they all died because of, I guess, the electric charge situation. I'm going to Alt F4. Okay, Whew. I think Alt F4 saved them. I think they're still alive. So here's the problem. Um, I can't time warp very fast because, I mean, if I time warp at a certain speed, Kerbin Station 1 is fine on the, on the electric charge. But if I go past uh, the, that time warp speed, it has a problem. I know, I, I tried it out in orbit. You can see it's not giving any messages right now, you see? It's just going around and around. No warning or anything during the nighttime side. It's fine, right? And we'll just have it run for a day to make sure it stays fine. Yep, no messages at all. Now I go one more tick up. And then it starts giving me electric charge warnings. But uh, if I go back to the safe position, it recharges immediately. And if I continue like this, it will not have any problems. I made the mistake of going all the way up to the final one because we're trying to time warp for 100 days after all. Um, but I guess that's not safe. Okay, well, this wait has been tedious and unfortunately I had to do it twice because uh, the first time I decided to restart the game afterwards because it took a long time to uh, time warp at that time warp level and I was just a little bit concerned about the state of the game at that point and it turned out that it undid my time warp I hadn't properly saved the persistent file so I have to do it again I'm not waiting any longer uh, they're down to 11 17 and 13 percent radiation and I just got a message that said that an RCS port uh, was malfunctioning on the station so we'll jump to the station have them repair it and come have them come back after that and then I'll probably bring back uh, the crew of Euphrates station and then work on the dual missions so let's do this at least we haven't had too many problems during the time warp so I'm just gonna put Bill in the pod and then transfer the other two. Well, we got some use out of this station. So they are all three of them in there and we can separate now. I guess we'll set down in the desert, which is still okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna dump the food. <laughs> yeah. Just in case. Okay, no, it seems fine. I don't have to do anything more. Though that's probably because I'm using the engines. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, this time we saved the heat shield and recover vessel. So successful radiation mitigation for these Kerbals at least. And let's bring back the Minmus crew ahead of potential plans to see what real solar system does to all this business. And then we'll see what state these dual missions are in. And I've been getting errors, error messages for them all the, all the time. So who knows? So far, the Sentinel Telescope has done three asteroids. Okay, we should certainly top off our life support. Oh, geez, I didn't even notice there is a tilted tank here, too. And that's auto strata to grandparent part. That's what people told me to auto strut them to, and it's still tilting like that. And that's not this one. This one was an old one. I don't know. That seems messed up to me. That particular joint. With that, that tank, it's always that tank. That's a problematic tank. 
Okay, I think we've supplied all we can over here. This doesn't have the use of one of its spark engines, though. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, we can't just run one spark engine. We do have the RCS as a backup. Critical failure. You know, though, we could move this. Hold on. We need a wrench, but our engineer can just move it to the center to Kent. Uh, yep, Kent Ribford. Let's dock and get uh, tools. Unless Ribford already has tools. There we go. Darn that message blocking it. All right. Oh, that's close enough. Let's take the other one and put it into inventory. Oh, no, we can't. Just, no, no, it's not just, it's really heavy. Um, and we can't destruct it. That's not a thing. Okay, well, let's see. I guess that's okay. Looks fine. A little bit of pitch being used, but not a huge amount. Okay, well, we've got a good periapsis around Kerbin, and it looks like uh, things are going good. The replacement work by Ribfurt is working out for us. Now, I don't know about all this Z fighting and whether this module is going to separate properly from our heat shield. That's a bit of a question mark. We'll see. Fobri Kerman has been exposed to intense radiation? 50%? Wait, I thought Fobri was in the um, cure thingy. Gosh darn it. I left the cure thingy working, I thought. Hmm. Well, Fobri might need to use the sick bay at Kerbin station later. Actually, they all look like they need it. So apparently while I was using the sick bays over at the Kerbin station, the sick bays weren't working on the Minma station, on Euphrates station. I don't know. I hadn't turned them off, I don't think. Well, here we go. Let's see if we can eject off the service module. <laughs> Okay, that's sort of fine, but we've got this ring over the heat shield. Hopefully that does not change its efficacy in any way. I don't know. Apparently it turned back on the shroud that I had turned off. This one's a lot lighter because it doesn't try and bring the service module back down with it so I don't think the parachutes are gonna have any problems we do have a lot of mob propellant to dump that's glowing red well it can just go ahead and explode as long as the heat shield's still there I wonder if it actually reduces our drag though the heat shield has sort of abnormally high drag this does not, maybe. I don't know. We're not slowing down as much as I would normally think we ought to. Well, maybe it's okay. Oh, we've got some interesting stuff going on. Uh, that sort of floats up and then comes back down. All right, whatever. Uh, arm the chutes. Okay, full parachute deployment gets us to... Still a little bit fast, so I'm going to dump the monopropellant. Oh, that did something. Yeah, no more food. I think we'll leave it at that. Eight meters per second. Might be a heat shield destruction scenario. Nope. Nope, it's all good because it was splashed down. Recover vessel. And they are back. Alright, after we check on them, 
It is jewel probe time, and we'll see what's left of our jewel probes. Dolman got the biggest boost, though, of course, that was already baked into his level. Okay, well, here is our jewel system lander. That was optimistic, but, well, it is entering jewel system. And it actually has communication, somehow. And there's Tylo getting us into orbit if we pay it 73 meters per second. But it's an inclined orbit. Maybe we can fix that a little bit. I don't even know if my engine's working. I mean, I seem to have Delta V down there. That's a nice tight orbit and not too inclined. Oh, double encounter with Tylo? I don't think we need that. But at least it shows that the inclination is good. Okay, so we can do this. Let's see, anything wrong with this? That doesn't seem to have any problems. There's uh, this little guy, double C seismic accelerometer as a malfunction. Other than that, it's looking pretty good actually. Uh, this ant engine has a malfunction, but we've got plenty of symmetrical partners and actually they're all redundant to this spark engine. Let's check out this dual orbital sciencer. Well, it too is trying to use Tylo, and it too is not quite right. Okay, there we go, and that gives us a bonus lathe encounter, so that's excellent. And we can do this in six days. We'll just follow this in, because that will be the next thing. But let's take stock of the probe and see what's gone wrong. One of its solar panels is busted. One of its backup solar panels is busted. Um, this spark engine is busted. We've got the backup ants, of course. Uh, this antenna is busted. There's a lot that's busted. But we have redundancy. It's looking good, actually. Much better than I thought. Okay, yeah, we've got the tile encounter, safe dual periapsis, and a lathe encounter, so that's all okay. We can add the SOI change alarm and get rid of that alarm, and we'll follow this uh, dual system lander next. Okay, safe flyby of Tylo and safe periapsis around Jewel. And nice and flat. Okay, adding the SOI change alarm. Right, next one, Orbital Sciencer Mark II, <laughs> backup. And we see one busted solar panel there. This doesn't have the big solar panels that the previous one did. But still, that seems to be the only problem right now. Looks like this one's trying to use Lathe instead of Tylo. Oh, uh, we had a brief communication issue. Uh-oh. Hmm. Oh, electric charge. Um. Well, are we or are we not getting as much... Well, you know what? Let me just turn off SAS. Seems to be getting as much exposure as possible. I think because this didn't have as much solar panelry, it's having electric charge issues. Mm. It's connecting through that dual relay half the time. Uh, maybe we should formalize that and retract this. I don't know if that'll save power or not. That's sort of a realism, uh, remote tech thing. Um, Why does it keep trying to reactivate SAS then? So, wait, while I'm time warping, no. I thought... I don't know what it's doing to recharge at all, actually. 
I think I'm just gonna declare this one goners. We have some good ones anyway. Okay, yeah, this one is going to be defunct. Let's check on the dual relay. This one barely has communication with both of them active. Um, power is probably not optimal right now. Um, I guess there is the hibernate while in warp thing, is there? Or is that from something else? Let me see. Where is our probe core? That must be from something else, because that's not an option here. Okay. I wonder if this orientation is better or sun down. Because the problem is pointing directly at the sun, these back ones aren't going to be of any use. But that's still... Uh, no. It needs to be a little bit off. If it's just like this, it's no good. But maybe if it's a little bit off, it's okay. This is actually going to encounter Val. Can Val bring us into orbit safely? Or is it too small? We might need to do something at Val to help out. Hmm. Seems like it's going to be inclined. And yeah, that's not really getting us into orbit, is it? So why don't we try and get into orbit directly at Val? And we might as well go polar if we want to do that. So it can scan Val. Well, no, this is a relay. Well, still, that's probably better for communication, maybe, kind of. And we want it to be high up. Well, that doesn't seem like too much. Well, 1,200 is something that we have, apparently. That doesn't say in this stage, though. Hmm. Okay, 0, 0. .0. And then, in theory, 1,220 to make orbit. Looks like that seems good. All right, so I'll add that SOI change. Well, these seem to have been much more successful than I was expecting. I was honestly expecting complete disaster and all of them failed or not in communication. Right now, at least, it seems like we've got three out of four. But we'll see how it is in the next episode where I think I'll take more time to situate them properly. And uh, I don't want to rush at this point. So I'll wrap it up here with these three going into uh, the Moons of Jewel and trying to capture. And so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.